Did you know Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo modules are one of the vital components used to make body-worn cameras intelligent? It's just one of the many ways IoT is keeping our first responders safe. On this episode of Tech Ventures, I will introduce the Sterling LWB Plus, a Wi-Fi Bluetooth combo module and the corresponding development kit from Laird Connectivity. Hi, welcome back to Tech Ventures. My name is Lizina, and I'm the Technical Marketing Engineer at Future Electronics. If you're interested in checking out any previous Tech Venture videos, then please click the link on the screen or check out the description box below. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to get started with the Laird Connectivity Sterling LWB Plus Development Kit. But before I do that, let's talk about the module. This module is based on the Infineon Wi-Fi 4 and Bluetooth 5.2 AirOff chipset, the CYW43439. What's great about this module, from a hardware perspective, is that there's an integrated power amplifier and low noise amplifier, which ensures reliable connectivity and reduces bomb cost. It's also offered in three different flavors, as a base SIP module, with the SIP module and an MHF4 connector, or with a chip antenna. If you live and breathe in Linux, I have great news for you. This module uses Linux backports to ensure compatibility with a wide variety of Linux kernels. Now on to the demo. Things you'll need to set yourself up. You'll need the Sterling LWB Plus kit, which looks like this. As this is a hosted module, you will need an NXP i.mx 6ULL host processor. I'll list the part number for the evaluation kit on the screen. Before we can unite these two boards, we need to prepare the NXP i.mx 6ULL board. The board does not come installed with the headers, and instead of soldering the jumper wires to the board, I recommend installing headers to facilitate the use of jumper wires to enable communication between the two boards. Before you do that, to enable the UART connection, you need to short resistor number 1732. It's a lot more challenging to short the resistor after you've installed the headers. Next, we'll need to make the following connections between the LWB Plus and the i.mx 6ULL eval kit to enable the Bluetooth UART interface. You'll need these connections to power um, for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth regulators. On the LWB Plus, we need to ensure the following jumpers are set. Jumper J7 needs to be set to pins 1 and 2 for the SDIO, and jumper J4 needs to be set to pins 2 and 3 for the 3.3 volts. So with all the wires and everything, this is what our final setup looks like. Next, attach the antenna and connect the power supply and USB connectors over here. And that concludes the hardware setup. The next step is to set up the software environment and build the sample images, which is done in Linux. For the purposes of today's video, I will not be going over it, but the sample Yocto recipes are available for download on GitHub. Laird Connectivity provides a Yocto meta layer to make integration easier. I have already baked my recipe and flashed it to my SD card. And now for the fun stuff. Open a terminal program of your choice. I'm going with TerraTerm. Make sure you've selected the appropriate COM port and enter in the following settings for the serial port. And you'll see a sign of life from the board and you'll be prompted to log in. and enter root when prompted. After initial booting, check dmessage to ensure that the driver and firmware are loaded. The command displayed on the screen verifies that for us. Based on the response received, we can observe that the BRCM FMAC driver is loaded and using US regulatory domain. Next, we need to check that the file is up and running, and we can do that by entering this command. I had previously configured my module to connect to my access point, and we can see the details of my network over here. To test the Bluetooth radio, we're going to first attach it to BlueZ, which is a Bluetooth stack included with the official Linux kernel distributions. 
Everything looks great, and now I'm going to scan for Bluetooth devices with this command. Our controller is ready to pair to other devices, and we can power it on using the power on command. And here are all the devices within my vicinity that are discoverable. To exit out of this prompt, enter exit. Now for Wi-Fi, we have a few more steps to follow. As I mentioned before, I had previously connected to um, the access point and in order to set up the Wi-Fi connection, we need to edit the WPA supplicant.configuration file to add a Wi-Fi network. So enter the command displayed on the screen. Modify the SSID and PSK with your access point name and key. To save your modifications and to exit VI, enter colon and WQ. Next, we need to edit the WPA supplicant service file to use the WPA supplicant.configuration file and to use interface WLAN0. So enter the command displayed on the screen, like so. And once you're in the VI editor, um, we need to modify this line over here. Um, it's too long for me to say out loud, but um, if you want to copy it directly, I can, I can pass the guide to you. And then to exit the VI editor, you need to enter colon WQ to save your modifications as well. Now we need to restart the WPA supplicant and verify that an IP address was obtained. Enter this following command displayed on the screen to restart the supplicant service. And then next, we're going to verify that an IP address was obtained, so we're going to enter this command. And from here, I can see that an IP address was indeed obtained. Um, it's, it's displayed over here. And the final test is to ping Google. So we're going to ping 8.8.8.8. .8 and success. So now you know how to set up your Sterling LWB Plus module with the NXP i.mx6 ULL processor. Before I sign off today, I wanted to quickly mention an advantage to using layered connectivity for your IoT design projects. They can support every aspect of the wireless design, whether it's via standard support or through design and test services to ensure your ability to get to market quickly. They also have multiple country certifications with certified antenna type options to maximize your product performance. NXP has a broad range of microcontrollers with varying levels of performance and functional integration. Their product portfolio provides quality and longevity for thousands of diverse applications. They have their own software platform and a significantly established partner network, and this makes them the great choice to optimize, ease, and accelerate your design development needs. To learn more about Laird Connectivity wireless modules or NXP processors, please contact your local Future Electronics representative or visit us online at futureelectronics.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on Tech Ventures with Lazina.